Hello everyone welcome today's top 5 news highlights from American Life 365 August 1st, 2024. Trump questions Harris's identity, saying he didn't know she was black. Israel says it killed Hamas military chief in July airstrike. U.S. looks for ways to revive Gaza ceasefire talks. Brian Nelson leaving Treasury to advise Harris presidential campaign. As J.D. Vance takes heat, Trump fans rally to his side. Former President Donald Trump questioned Vice President Kamala Harris over her race, suggesting his election rival only began identifying as a black woman in recent years. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black, Trump said Wednesday at the National Association of Black Journalists annual convention. So I don't know, is she Indian, or is she black? He continued, I respect either one but she obviously doesn't because she was Indian all the way and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she became a black person. And I think somebody should look into that, too. Harris, 59 years old, is the daughter of Indian and Jamaican immigrants. She was raised in a predominantly black neighborhood in Berkeley, California, because, she said, her mother thought her daughters would one day be seen as black women and wanted them to have strong role models around them. Harris attended Howard University, a historically black institution in Washington, D.C., and is a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha, a black sorority. Question is if she is qualified to black community or if anyone participates in a black community will become black. Israel has determined that it killed top Hamas military commander Mohammed Deif in a July airstrike, other high-ranking deaths. Israel also killed Fuad Shakr, a Hezbollah commander, and Hamas political leader Ismail Haniya in recent strikes. The country's military said Thursday, eliminating a planner of the October 7 attacks and a militant it had tried to kill for decades. Deef is the most senior military leader of the U.S.-designated terrorist group whom Israel says it has killed in more than nine months of fighting in the Gaza Strip and the third high-ranking enemy of the country to be declared dead in 48 hours. These actions have raised fears of a wider Middle East conflict due to the responses from Hezbollah and Iran. Deef was a key planner of the October 7 attacks that resulted in significant casualties and hostages. The death of Mohammed Deef, a top Hamas military commander, has significant implications for both Hamas and Israel. Deef's death creates a leadership void within Hamas, as he was a key figure in their military operations. His death could disrupt Hamas's military strategies and operations, as he was involved in planning major attacks, including the October 7 attacks on Israel. The loss of such a prominent leader might affect the morale of Hamas fighters and supporters. Israel views Deef's death as a significant military success, as he was one of their most wanted targets. This event could provide a political boost for Israeli leaders, showcasing their ability to eliminate high-profile threats. Israel may increase security measures and military operations to prevent retaliatory attacks from Hamas and its allies. The death of Deef and other high-ranking figures could escalate tensions in the region, potentially leading to more violence and conflict. These developments might complicate ceasefire negotiations and efforts to achieve peace in the region. Overall, Deef's death marks a turning point in the ongoing conflict between Hamas and Israel with potential repercussions for both sides and the broader Middle East. The Biden administration is scrambling to salvage prospects for a Gaza ceasefire after the political leader of Hamas was killed in a strike in Tehran, dealing a potentially fatal blow to the talks and leaving officials worried that Israel may now face major retaliatory attacks on two fronts. Israel claimed responsibility for an airstrike in Beirut that killed a Hezbollah leader, but hasn't claimed the Tehran strike. The U.S. is worried about potential retaliatory attacks on Israel and American forces by Iran and its proxies. Large crowds attended Hania's funeral in Tehran, highlighting the tension and potential for escalation. While U.S. officials said they expected the Beirut attack, the Tehran strike caught Washington off guard and almost immediately darkened the already remote prospects for a U.S.-brokered Gaza ceasefire. Even more alarming to the U.S., 
the killings threatened to unleash new and more severe reprisals against Israel and potentially American forces in the region by Iran and its proxies. As of now, President Biden has not made any recent public statements specifically addressing the death of Mohammed Deif or the related escalations between Hamas and Israel. His recent speeches have focused on other topics, such as Supreme Court reforms and his decision to withdraw from the 2024 presidential race. Joe Biden is still the President of the United States. However, he recently announced that he will not be running for re-election in 2024. He is to pass torch to Harris. Brian Nelson is leaving his position at the U.S. Treasury Department to join Vice President Kamala Harris's presidential campaign as a policy advisor. Nelson, who has worked at Treasury since late 2021, will join the presidential campaign of Vice President Kamala Harris as a policy advisor, according to a campaign official. Axios reported on Tuesday that Nelson would be joining Harris's presidential campaign. Before Treasury, Nelson worked with Harris during her time as a U.S. Senator and held various roles in the California Justice Department and the LA 28 Olympic Organizing Committee for there haven't been any specific allegations or evidence of conflicts of interest regarding Brian Nelson's transition from the U.S. Treasury Department to Kamala Harris's presidential campaign. However, Given his significant role in implementing sanctions policies and his new position as a policy advisor, it's possible that some might raise concerns about potential conflicts of interest or the influence of his previous work on his new role. How does the Treasury Department handle potential conflicts of interest for its employees? What safeguards are in place to prevent policy advisors from benefiting personally from their roles? In the two weeks since J.D. Vance was nominated by the GOP as Donald Trump's running mate, he has been seen by many voters, including some Republicans, as a lightning rod for controversy. But the Nevadans who turned out Tuesday to hear Vance saw him as something else, Trump's hand-picked heir. I came to see what the future of the GOP looks like, said Kate Marsh, 38 years old, a local property manager. Vance is who Trump picked to Kimwar has been seeking to define himself on the campaign trail since Trump chose him at the start of the Republican convention. The decision, which came before President Biden announced he would step out of the race, has since been second-guessed by some Republicans, as Vance is seen as a populist, right-wing messenger who appeals to Trump's MAGA base but might not to the voters needed to win a close race in swing states such as Nevada. He is seen as a controversial figure but is supported by Trump's base. Vance's campaign speech in Reno focused on criticizing Vice President Kamala Harris, calling her dangerously liberal and blaming her for immigration issues. He also criticized free trade, globalization, and the media. Vance supports tighter borders, tariffs, an isolationist foreign policy, and government intervention in the economy, echoing Trump's anti-establishment message. Some Republicans are second-guessing Trump's choice of Vance, concerned about his appeal to swing state voters. However, supporters see him as Trump's chosen successor. That is all for today's top 5 new highlights. If you like our video, please subscribe, share and like. Thanks.